Hi, this is Bruce with uh, Habowski Studio. Welcome to another painting day. It is about 8, 10 in the morning. I'm here at Three Mile Pond outside of Augusta, Maine. And today I'm going to be trying to paint that over there, right straight across. And I'll be using a 6 by 8 panel. And of course, uh, there's my trusty Gorilla Box. I love this thing. Uh, I think it's my favorite out of all my painting boxes. Very, very useful. And of course, we get uh, going to be using a little titanium white, Mars black, ultramarine blue, cad yellow, pale, cad red medium, a little lizard when needed, and a little yellow ochre. So let's get started and see how it goes. Beautiful day. It's going to be about 65 today, I guess. Okay. Here's my sketch I got going here, and uh, I'm looking right into the sun. There we go. And what I'll be doing, of course, because I'm compressing, you see how the distance back there is very close to where the foreground plane overlaps into the water a bit. So the key there is going to be have the high contrast in the trees in the front there, of course, and then I'm going to push back the trees in the background. Uh, purposely adding, I, I think, a little more purple. And then, of course, the sky up above. Uh, I wouldn't call it hazy. I mean, there's blue sky up above, but then the distant clouds. So that'll be nice to offset the uh, background trees. And uh, I did a little something different this time. Sketched it out in ultramarine blue. And uh, see how that works out. And I just used a number two bright which of course all these companies are different but it's roughly about a quarter inch wide to sketch it out and that's kind of about the range I'll be using uh, except for the backgrounds I'll be getting into some uh, bigger brushes but here we go so I've got part of the sky blocked in here and what I'm going to do is save some of the original color mixed on the palette and I started the pile on the right to be the lighter tones in the clouds that you see above the distant trees and then I'll work them back and forth uh, wet and wet edges and I'm also you probably can't see it I'll try to get in there I'm trying to get some interesting brush strokes in the sky and I'm using a flat again this one's uh, says size 10, but like I said, it's probably, I guess, about half an inch. The sky coming along, and I really like uh, one thing to pay attention to. Number one, I started on the sky first because, of course, it's changed quite a bit. You still get the tones. Uh, kind of got the shapes I wanted in the beginning. Now I'm working, and what's interesting with the flat brushes, I'm working in a vertical up and down. When I apply the paint, I'm kind of liking how that's working out and uh, just trying to suggest all the nuances in the little distant clouds because they're all kind of uh, pushed together near the horizon. And uh, now I'm going to be getting some tones in the water, get that going, and then I'll start. Well, I'll probably work in the background uh, tone first and then the water, get the relationships of the values, which is going to be key. And especially with the sky, so nothing stands out too much. I'm really I get the detail shot and hold it still. So let's continue on. What I've done now is I've put in a little bit of that uh, greenish tone, greenish, uh, yellowish green tone of the spring growth of the tree to give me some measures for the distant uh, tree line to get the values and so on. Now I'm starting to we're going to be working on the reflections in the water and foreground and get some of those and then I'll be working on the trees on the left there. Okay, it's coming along though. Uh, things change a lot in the outdoors. you got to kind of pick something, stick with it, and hope you pick the right notes in the first place to compare so that it doesn't matter if something shifts. You can still pull a highlight from wherever that highlight is in the sun. So that's the plan. I try to nail shadows and such early. Okay. Getting in a little bit of the reflection, and uh, now I'll be concentrating a little bit on trees on the left, get some detail 
and uh, reflections into water more. Got some bass tones in, uh, be suggesting some other tones uh, in the reflections of the trees in the background, but uh, getting the gist of it here. And just a basic little lake scene, but yeah, that's what's happening right now. I'll get back to you and give you try to give you a little close up every now and then. And just fun to be outdoors and practice some color mixing and paint application. And they each inform the other when I'm indoors painting in the studio. I think of the techniques I might have used outside and vice versa. Really helps. And I'm not using oil today, just turpentine. Which you got to be careful of because you don't want to get your paint too wet. Because uh, then it just has a hard time blending starting to warm up quite a bit here and uh, the paint starting to tack up because I'm only using turps a little bit and not super thick paint and so I'm gonna call it good and nice fun experience super peaceful here let me give you a little pan shot real quick just beautiful place and not a soul came the whole time I was here which I don't know hour and a half super peaceful and here's the painting do a little touch-ups in the studio later but it's got a good gist to it i try to get way in there yep. very hard to do landscapes for me anyway i'm used to architectural subjects and that sort of thing so landscapes are a challenge especially outdoors because you really gotta select your lights and darks quickly I mean there's different ways you could tackle things if I had to do this over again I think I would have painted the trees in and then when I painted the sky cut in around to create the leaves of the trees as opposed to afterwards because then uh, if you're not careful a little bit of the white mixes in gets milky but that's the whole point of being outdoors and trying to learn these skills and that's all we can do if you get uh, if you like 30% of it I guess you're doing pretty good 